Hello, and welcome to Art Minutes. I'm Patricia Tomlinson, curator at the Appleton Museum of Art. Today, I want to talk to you about a very elaborate porcelain piece in our permanent collection that was made by the Volkstätte Porzellan Manufaktur in Dresden, Germany. Now, when we look at this piece, it is made up, I'm going to go from right to left, it is made up of two people, one woman seated at a piano, a man behind her playing a flute. As we move to the left, we see a man and a woman dancing. And then on the far left, we have a seated couple who are watching the dancers. This is a very large piece. It is 28 inches long and 14 high, so it's quite big. And it's really impressive how it was entirely made of porcelain at such a large scale. One of the things I wanted to talk about as well is the age of this piece. When you first look at the figures and how they are dressed, you might assume that it's much older than it actually is. And let's look into that a little bit. When we look at the detail on the man who is dancing in the center of the piece, he has on very typical clothing of the 18th century. He has a long frock coat that goes to his knees, knee breeches. You can just see a very long waistcoat underneath his coat. And of course, he has a powdered wig that is tied back in the fashion of the day around the mid 1700s. When we look at the female figure, she also is wearing a gown from an earlier era, but it's a little bit more difficult to figure out exactly what type of gown. When we see the fabric hanging from the back on the far left side of her gown, that is called a Watteau back, and that was very popular in a gown referred to both as a sack back gown and also a robe a la Française. However, it would never be bundled up in the back like that. That is more the style of a mantua. And a mantua was a very, very formal court gown where the train of the gown was often very cleverly wound around the body to make it easier to move about and then could be unfurled when one was actually in court before the king and queen in those very formal circumstances. So her gown is a little bit of a mashup between two different styles. But one of the things I really wanted to point out to you that I think is fascinating about the Volkstätte Porzellin Manufaktur is, as I mentioned earlier, they were from the Dresden, Germany era. And some of you may know that Dresden, Germany, for a very long time, was very famous for its lace making. Dresden lace was some of the best in the world. And you see that in these pieces. They incorporated lace into the actual porcelain, and I'm going to kind of talk about how they did that. They would get actual pieces of real lace, drip, dip it in a kaolin clay slurry, and then carefully attach the lace to the actual figures that were about to be fired. And then in the firing process, in the heat of the ovens, the lace would burn away, the actual lace would burn away, and then you would have this porcelain lace left behind. As you can see here in the detail, on her sleeve, all the ruffles down the front of her gown, and then her petticoat peeking out at the bottom. That is all porcelain lace that at one time was actual real lace that had been manufactured in, in Dresden, Germany. So that's one of the really interesting things. And a lot of the porcelain ma manufactories in this area did this. They became very famous for their elaborate depictions of the lace. So when you look at porcelain scenes and figures that the manufactory was creating, a lot of them have an enormous amount of this lace on it to demonstrate their expertise in being able to create this particular art form.
going back to the actual age of this artwork, it was actually created after 1945. The Volkstätte Porzellin Manufacture was bombed in World War II and did not rebuild the factory until after that period of time. So even though this piece, as we mentioned before, at first glance, looks like it might be from the 18th century. It is actually more, much more modern than that. Thank you so much for joining me for this Art Minute, and I look forward to speaking with you again.